Today we're going to be looking at 10 sleepers for fantasy football. We're going to start with the middle round players, the guys getting some buzz, and we're going to work our way a little bit deeper. We're going to talk some quarterback, we're going to talk some tight end, wide receivers and running backs because we know those positions. But before we dig in, you need to click that subscribe button right now because we're going to be doing this with the waiver wire every day of the season helping you get your waiver wire gets we're also going to be doing deep dives on those players who are jumping up the waiver wire jumping up in value climbing the depth charts guys in weird scenarios will deep dive their stats every day on top of that using these videos to help you set your lineups click that button right now stop missing out but we're going to start with our first sleeper kind of sleeper middle round sleeper depending on what time of league you're playing in but brian thomas jr wide receiver 41 off the board mid round selection but i'm also here noise he's falling in double digit rounds in some leagues and some people are getting him at a discount that's why i kind of threw him in here today but he's a deep threat he gets those deep targets he's got 4-3 speed he's playing with trevor lawrence the jaguars is one of the fastest paced offenses in the league that means more opportunities for these players to score fantasy points because they'll be running more plays and they want to push it downfield because they signed Gabe Davis. They drafted him in the first round. They drafted Thomas in the first round and you're catching him at a very good discount, especially in home league drafts. If he's there, take the swing on the fence. It's him versus the RB2s in your league, him versus Dave Montgomery, Joe Mixon, Aaron Jones, those guys. If you're feeling good at the running back position, you're good at the wide receiver position, but you want to shoot for that lottery ticket, this is a lottery ticket, a sleeper player with a lot of upside. Same thing at the running back position with Trey Benson, but he's not going to be a starter right away because James Conner's still there. But if something happens to James Conner, you got a running back here that runs in the 4-3s that's very electric, that has looked good in preseason and training camp, that has the gusto and juice between the tackles to get the job done, and you're catching him in double-digit price range, and it might be even cheaper in your home league drafts. Home league drafts is what we're really talking about right now because those are the people mainly drafting right now because Labor Day has passed. Now it's those drafters who are just getting those drafts in right before kickoff. Trey Benson in those type of leagues, maybe a little bit later, pay attention to him. But Greg Dolchitz, if you want a tight end with some juice here that's going to go undrafted, you want to stream tight end. Maybe you don't even draft him. Maybe you pick him up off waivers. A guy to look at. He's going to be on the field. He's been productive. Those are his 2022 stats. Last year he was hurt. He looks fine now. He's with the quarterback Bo Nix who likes to dink and dunk it. He will take the underneath route. Greg Dolchitz is going to be that. He's going to get the yards after the catch. He's free. He's free, and if you want to go late round tight end or stream tight end, play the matchups with tight end, this is the guy to look at. So we're going a little bit lower on wide receiver here. We're going a little bit lower on these sleepers. Wide receiver 68 on underdog fantasy, which means he might be going undrafted in your league or might be one of the last picks, but there's a lot of upside in this Falcons offense. Kirk Cousins got Drake London and Kyle Pitts, and Darnell Mooney's going to be on the other side stretching the field and look at him being productive 2021 2020 back in the day with justin fields and everybody's down on justin fields couldn't get the starting job in pittsburgh but he can be productive in the bears offense why can't he be productive as a wide receiver too in the falcons offense that's looking to push the ball downfield he's going to get those deep targets he's got the deep speed he's going to be a splash play guy you're catching him free you're catching him free. You're not paying anything for him. And if you don't like it, you can always release him back to the waiver wire and get somebody else. Jalen Wright is one of my favorite upside running backs. From the upside meter, from one to five, for these double digit running backs, he's a five for me. I'm getting him in a lot of leagues. And the thing is, he's a stash. He is a top tier stash and hold. You hold him as long as you can. Do not ask if you can hold them any longer. You can only hold them until you can't. And if you can't, it's because you got to make a roster move to set your lineup or somebody grandiose went to the waiver wire. You're holding him as long as possible because if HN or Moster gets hurt, either one of those, he's next guy up, 4-3 speed, fits this offense very well. This is a fast-paced offense. Everybody wants fancy players from this offense. So if he gets the opportunity or when he gets the opportunity, his stock is going to go through the roof. Bryce Young, he's free, might be drafted as a QB2 in your league, but this team invested in the offensive line, new coaching staff, 
that was at Tampa Bay. Canales was, and he turned Baker Mayfield around. Baker Mayfield, very productive last year. And Tampa Bay was faster paced than Carolina. That should be brought to Carolina. They brought in Deontay Johnson. They spent a first rounder on Xavier Leggett. Jonathan Brooks should come back somewhere down the line this season from that injury. Bryce Young's been looking good in training camp. He's been accurate. He's been making plays. He's got a better offensive line in front of him. Like I said, that's going to allow him to be more comfortable. He's got two good wide receivers, Adam Thielen and Deontay Johnson, who create separation. Now he has the upside with Xavier Leggett. There's a lot of good things going on here. I'm not expecting him to go to the moon. I'm not even really expecting him to be a QB1 every week. But QB28 price tag, that's very cheap. Now we're going really deep with our sleepers. Jalen Tolbert is in an offense that might have some games funnel his way. Michael Gallup's gone. The team loves him. The Cowboys did not bring any wide receivers of consequence to compete against him. Flournoy is a deeper target to look at if you're looking at deep, deep sleepers. But Jalen Tolbert's going to be on the field. He's going to be getting an opportunity. He's been making plays in training camp left and right. Made a number switch to number one, which from a drip scenario, from how he looks on the field, just makes you get that feeling that he can be productive. Had 2.1 targets per game last year. That should go up. But to how many? Three, four, five? Something like that. I don't expect him to lead the team in receiving. Nobody does. I don't expect him to beat out Brandon Cooks. But Brandon Cooks had a knee issue earlier in camp. He's an older wide receiver. If something happens, Tolbert's going to be on the field. They like this kid. They like him a lot. He's a deep stash. More than likely, you can't fit him on your roster. At least pay attention to his snaps and his targets. Marshawn Lloyd did not go to IR. I kept that note in there to note that. But A.J. Dillon did. They also got Emmanuel Wilson on the roster to compete with him. He's going to start off slow due to the hamstring. But he's a guy to stash and hold due to the draft capital, due to the speed, due to what we saw at USC, and due to what we saw at the Senior Bowl. I expect Josh Jacobs to get the workload. But he's a stash, so I'm not worried about the starter. I'm watching the starter to see if he gets hurt. And if he does get hurt, I'm rolling with Lloyd. I'm rolling with Wilson. I'm seeing what's going on here. But his upside is very immense due to the size of just athleticism, his pop and the step, and his vision. Zach Ertz is free. He's free. There's no ADP with this guy. But Jahan Dotson's gone. And this is going to be a faster-paced RPO offense where they're trying to get the ball out quickly for Jaden Daniels to keep him upright behind this offensive line so he doesn't get injured as a rookie here. So that means there's going to be some targets going underneath. And Zach Ertz, the veteran tight end there, he's going to be there to soak him up. Ben Sennett is a deeper target that you want to look at at tight end. He could emerge somewhere down the line this season. Pay attention to him. But Zach Ertz has some upside in his offense. He was nasty last year. He had two games with 10 targets last year. He can get it underneath. He's got some upside. He's good to go in his offense. So if you're streaming tight ends, look at Zach Ertz. Miles Sanders isn't really back, but Canales is saying, hey, this could be a committee. This could be a battle between him and Chuba for the touches. If that's being said, you're going to want to watch his workload. You want to see what's going on with Sanders, how he's being used. How big is the split? Is it 50-50? Is Chuba winning it? Is Sanders is winning it? We can do a guess of who thinks is going to win it. Chuba looked better last year, but he wasn't like the most efficient running back either. Miles Sanders was dealing with a groin injury most of last year as well. Slowed him down, so maybe he's healthy. Canales says he's looking good, but coaches are going to say positive things about their player. Just watch him. Just watch him. Just see what's going to happen. If you're in a deeper league, you may want to stash him. But I've been saying, hey, deep leagues, look at this guy. Look at this guy because it could be a mixed bag. New coaching staff, new things happen. And if he's healthy, looking good, he could be spry enough to help. Those are 10 sleepers that you can look at for fantasy football that you can draft or look at off the waiver wire, whatever happens. But some deep plays, some not so deep plays, but might be sleeping in your draft. Guys to look at. Let me know who you're getting in your drafts below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching. Catch you on the next video.